some unexplained going ons in the Jake Paul Ty Tyron Woodley fight I'd like to talk about. But first off, um, this is the first time I purchased one of these and it'll be the last. So this is one and done. Um, say Jake Paul fights uh, Tommy Fury next. I don't need to pay $60 to watch two beginners fight. I mean, I've had plenty of that in my life. I've got about 200 amateur fights I've cornered and 44 pro fights. So I've seen a million of these beginner fights. So anyway, I didn't have a problem with Jake Paul. Inexperienced, didn't have any amateur. His first three opponents were from the morgue. Um, went eight rounds. Normally a fighter, depending on their amateur experience, they start with maybe three or four, four rounders. Then you graduate to six rounders, maybe three or four, six rounders. Then you go to eight, so on and so forth. So for Jake Paul, and he got fatigued around the fourth round or earlier, I could tell. I was texting back and forth with my daughter. She didn't purchase. And um, I said, I have, I have a 3-1 for Jake Paul. And about the sixth round, I said, he, uh, Woodley should be able to stop him in the seventh or eighth the way Jake Paul's getting fatigued and losing his legs. I knew he, the legs were gone. And sure enough, he mentioned that. Here's the, here's the bizarre stuff. And I'm not one into thinking ever a fight's fixed, conspiracy theories or nothing. In fact, I was pissed off at all the people before the fight. Had to be MMA people or people that just didn't like Jake Paul. If Woodley loses, it was fixed. You know, they're not going to give Jake Paul any credit. And this is a good excuse for the MMA people for the Disney boy beating their boy. So I was pissed about that. So when Woodley... That should have been called a knockdown. The ropes held him up. They had inept referees and that one inept official. So even Woodley, after he hits him, he knows it's a knockdown. He didn't even go for it, which was cool. Woodley, he's waiting for the referee. Nothing. Then Jake Paul stands up. Then Woodley goes after him. And here's the part that's bizarre. How nonchalant he didn't go after it. Follow him around front, does a jab, hits him, but doesn't even follow with the right hand. He's known for the big right hand. He got the right hand in, which started this. Just following him around, doing nothing. And I'm finally in my mind, I'm going, is this on the up and up? What is going on? What's with Woodley? Speaking of what's with Woodley, those trainers... They should be put in jail for impersonating a boxing trainer. Yeah, I, I'm going to say it. I'm going to call it out. I, I don't care how popular my site is or what. You're going to hear the truth here. You're going to have a guy come fronted out, fronted up, standing straight up, which doesn't get his jab out at all. And, of course, a right hand comes. Tyson would do this. Counter. Left hand. Tyson would. And counter. But, no, you're just going to have your hands up. Let Jake Paul hit your gloves, they're occupied, you can't counter with them because their gloves are getting slammed in your face. You're, that's the way you're going to do this thing? You're not going to try to set some offense up so you can win the fight? Real good, trainers. You're not going to have him sideways, Jake Paul's weak jab comes at him, and Jake Paul was bringing it back to his waist even early on. You're not going to have him slip, that jab go over his head, bam! You're not going to teach Woodley an overhand right? My video I made, overhand right. I sent it to all my MMA fighters to make sure Woodley sees this. Those trainers aren't going to teach him an overhand right? My guy Nate had 34 amateur fights. He... He threw it in his pro fight, knocked a, he's five, six and a half, knocked a six foot two and a half guy out. All right, that was bizarre, Woodley not going for it, walking around all fronted up. Okay, the next bizarre thing, Al, the award-winning announcer, Al Bernstein, uncharacteristic, 
And I'm going, whose ass is Al covering? So they go back and show it in slow motion when Woodley hurt Jake Paul. And it should have been a knockdown. So Al Bernstein's going, well, you could consider that a knockdown. The ropes help. He was pushed. Push. Bernstein's talking about a push, and there wasn't no kind of push, no way. It was a punch to the head. Woodley didn't push nothing. The teeth, Jake Paul at that point, and that right hand bouncing off the side of the head and, and pushing wow. him against the ropes. Could you call that a knockdown? I don't know. And Bernstein's not going to miss something. And so, yeah, there's a, there's UFOs in this. There's Bigfoot in this. There's Loch Neck. Loch Ness Monster in this. Oh, man. Shooter on the grassy knoll. All right. The last point I would like to make. The punch Woodley hit Jake Paul was an illegal punch. It was more so to the back of the head. It was in an area you don't call legal in boxing. Did the same thing Wilder did. Of course, Wilder wasn't even throwing a big white hook. So anyway, Jake Paul gives the back of it. He goes like this, and he's not even looking. More so Jake Paul than Woodley's fault, actually. But it was still an illegal punch. So however you want to score that, I don't, I don't care. It doesn't really make a difference. Although, if that were a two-point round, what's that give? I would have had to give Woodley... Three rounds, so but he still lost. So anyway, strange thing. I can't figure it out. Won't be getting De La Hoya's fight or any of these type fights. Definitely not if uh, Paul fights Fury next or gets a rematch with Woodley. After Woodley blew it in this fight like this, I'm not giving him a second chance. He had the experience. He was the experienced fighter. He knew it. he was fatigued. He should have went for it. Why he didn't go, I, I don't know why he didn't go for it. I kept saying, come on, you're ghetto tough. Let's show it. All right. I'm done with this one. Thanks for watching.